Hello and welcome to Hobbit Place. This week we are bringing you a brief reprieve from my Animal Crossing, a moment into the spin-off game, Exit the Gungeon, which is the side game to the first game that I ever did as Hobbit Place, which was Enter the Gungeon, one of my still favorite games. So you can imagine how excited I was to hear that this game had come out, and then how sad I was to know I only had a couple of days to play it before Animal Crossing came and uh, inevitably stole all of my life away. But I'm going to quickly do a run of this game, and to be honest, I'm still learning. I'm not that great at it. Part of the reason is because muscle memory, you know? I, I'm still thinking, enter the gungeon. And this game is quite different, as you'll see. A lot of the controls are the same, Some of the although all the characters are the same, the weapons are still there, but the general mechanics are very different. So let's go through the tutorial again, or well, for the first time for you guys to see, and I'll just show you how this spin-off works. Alright, so I'm gonna say do the whole thing. Welcome to the Halls of Knowledge. I love that it's the same tutorial guy as the original Enter the Gungeon as well. Okay, so due to the carelessness of Deathful Souls firing a weapon that rips through time and space, the Gungeon is crumbling. To reach the exit in time, you must ascend via the Tinker's network of makeshift elevators. So the premise of this game is because everyone's been playing Enter the Gungeon so much, the whole universe got destroyed. Because when you beat that game, you kind of turn back time. And so this whole game is like a time paradox. Okay, so I've instructed my assistant to set dress the hall's knowledge to approximate what your environment will be as you race to the top. The first and most important thing to master is the dodge roll. Yep, so it's exactly the same as an enter the gungeon. <laughs> Look at that guy! <laughs> oh, it's adorable. So when you dodge roll, you press the A button while holding left and right. Like that. And if you uh, are used to enter the gungeon, the left shoulder also dodge rolls. So it's the same control, but you can also use A now. I'm actually, I'm still not fully sure how I should put my hand on the controller for this game. Like, should it be there or there or... I don't know. You guys couldn't see that at all. Because the other rules are so excellent, there is one other thing I would like you to try. Legends tell of an ancient Gungeoneer who ascended when he dodge rolled. It is referred to as the ascending dodge roll, or the jump, basically. The scriptures say that to perform this fail technique, you must press the B button. That was the A button. This is the B button. And the funniest thing is, it says the sum goes as high as you can, the whole premise of Enter the Gungeon was that it was like a, a top-down roguelike shooter, right? So you couldn't jump in that game. But now, because you can jump, you just freak everybody out. You're like, wow, I can't believe they unlock that skill. But how will you get down? So you press, press down and press B. And that thing you did there, it was some kind of descending dodge roll. Surely I must be the first to have discovered this powerful technique. Okay, so that's the basics of this game. It's like platformer Enter the Gungeon, right? Excellent. Welcome back. Now that you are well versed in all three types of dodge roll, you can put them to use. When you dodge roll, you are invulnerable until you hit the ground. This means that you can dodge roll through bullets, and in the gungeons, bullets will be flying everywhere. On my command, the walls will begin to fire bullets. To survive, you must time your dodge roll so that the bullets pass you while you are in the air. As long as you are in the air, you are invulnerable. The easiest way to time it is to roll towards the bullets, not away from them. So the cool thing is if you jump vertically, the entire time that you're in the air, you are you have iframes. So it's very easy to dodge, but also hard because it uh, doesn't feel right if you've been playing Enter the Gungeon for years. So yeah, it can be counterintuitive. I know, I sure have, but this is a tested battle, battle tested technique. So, you're meant to roll through the bullets. You don't want to roll away from them, because I'll show you what happens if you roll away from them. You move at the same speed, and so you'll just like permanently have to try and dodge them. But if you go through them, then you don't take any damage as long as you're in the air. But you are vulnerable. You see at the bottom of the roll, at the end of the roll, when you're on the ground. I should have gotten hit there. I don't know why I didn't get hit there. Okay, so some of the bullets going to come from the top. And so we need to jump to avoid them. And this feels super unnatural to me, because it's just not in the original game. Okay, so you want to mount the platform. 
and now bullets come from below. So you need to descend dodge rolls through the bullets. It's a really small shift in the grand scheme of things. It's still very much a similar game to Enter the Gungeon. But this little difference makes it feel so strange to me because I'm just not used to gravity, you know? I'm not used to going up and down. Okay, do you want to try it again? Nope, I think we're pretty clear. Let's move on. Okay, so we're nearly there. In nearly every case, a well-timed dodge roll will keep you healthy. In the Gungeon, there are lots of bullets. And bullets, like life, come at you fast. That's deep. Sometimes it can be overwhelming and there may be no obvious way to dodge roll to avoid damage. For these rare situations, you must master the use of the blank. So the cool thing in Enter the Gungeon, and I'm sure in Exit it's going to be the same, blanks are actually completely unnecessary if you're good enough. There's no attack which you can only get past you without using a blank. What did I say? There's no attack which you can only dodge by using blanks. You can theoretically weave and dodge roll through anything. But blanks are a good way to clear the air and to give you a little bit of reprieve. So, yeah, very appreciated. Let's pick up the blank. Yep, so they are in limited supply. I'm not sure how many you get in this game, but um, they, they should be used as a last resort. Yep, he's absolutely right. Some commonly handled items like blanks are sticky and will attach you when you step on them. Others will need to be interacted with to be to hit up. Your interact button is your Y button. I'm gonna fire the bullets again. When I do use a blank to erase them. To use a blank, press the X button. So you'll see in this pattern, they come from all directions, so they'll close in on you. And you can actually just whoops. Let me give you another example. It's gonna time it really well though. So yeah, these bullets are gonna come at you, and you can just jump through them and then you don't get hit. But you were supposed to use a blank, so <laughs> you didn't do the uh, exercise properly. Okay, so now they come in, you press X. I didn't press X. I muscle memory and I double click the sticks, which is also the way to do it in Enter the Gungeon. And that still works, so. For the most part, if you played a lot of Enter the Gungeon, your muscle memory is going to be useful. For the most part. So blanks at one time, don't rely on them. For the moment you've been waiting for weapons training, gun shoots, the best defense other than an excellent defense is a good offense. <laughs> so kill enemies quickly to reduce the threat of taking damage. To shoot you'll need a gun. I didn't notice how funny that line was. I remember your favorite gun. Open the chest and take out your weapon. It's a, it's our good friend, the pea shooter. Now you are armed and mildly dangerous. When you exit the gungeon, the sorceress will bless your weapon. A blessed weapon will change its form and effectiveness every few seconds. So there's no chest guns in this game. It is just, it changes all the time. So you need to keep adapting to what comes at you. Calibro is a mysterious deity that rewards skillful gunplay and artful dodging. Displaying prowess in combat will surely curry favor with Calibro, who may reward you with increased firepower. Basically, the higher your combo, the more likely that your gun will take the form of something powerful. Now my assistant will play the role of one of the bloodthirsty natural inhabitants of the dungeon. Do not worry for their safety, True Gun Dead will show you no mercy. I feel really bad for shooting this guy the first time I played this game. He's not meaning any harm. As a volunteer, they understand the dangers involved. I assure you they are well protected. I really hope so. Use the R to aim your gun, and when I say, fire upon it. I feel so bad. At least it's only peas. Do you know what the sound effect reminds me of? In The Simpsons, the episode where Bart plays John Wilkes Booth, you have the mind of a killer. Yeah, where Bart plays John Wilkes Booth and he has this like toy gun that he shoots at Millhouse Abraham Lincoln and it goes bop, 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 bop. I think it's the same sound effect. I'm gonna go watch that right after recording this, just, just to confirm if it's the same sound effect. Okay, so don't even think about shooting me. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. The inhabitants of the Gungeon are far more dangerous than what you saw from my assistant. I would be abandoning my duties as a mentor if I did not prepare you for further for the dangers ahead. It is time for your final lesson. You must now, once again, face me in single combat. 
Show me no mercy, as none shall be given. I will allow your bullets to hit me just for this exercise. Okay, so again, you gotta fight this guy, and he's actually kind of tough if you don't know what you're doing. Because dodging up and down at this point still feels really, really unnatural. And aiming your gun with the right stick and then holding it up and down to jump is something that I'm still not fully used to. So this is very much a game about positioning, about figuring out where on the screen you want to be. Uh, the student has become competent. You were untouchable. I have nothing more to teach you. Passing my test is great. Is a great... Great what? Achievement. That's it. We're done here. I feel like that's where an achievement would appear if we were playing on um, PC or PS4 or whatever. But because we're on Switch, we don't get anything for that. Okay, if you want to practice, you can use the machine to support one real gun dead one at a time. That's actually really cool. I wish they had this feature in Enter the Gungeon. They have it in um, Crypto the Necronancer, and that's really cool because their enemies need you to be very specific about which way you move and what timing you use. And I love that they put that in here. I don't have. Oh, I haven't seen all the enemies, so I'm not gonna test it out. I'm just gonna do a few runs. The other thing I like about Exit the Gungeon is that the runs are very short. One thing that I had a lot of trouble with in Enter was that the runs, if you had a good one, it could go for more than an hour. And sometimes you're just not ready for that, right? You sit down to play and you never want to pause a session. So if you just happen to get a few really good drops, then you're like, oh, I guess I'm committed to playing this for the next 40 minutes. Whereas this one is very quick, it, so far at least. I've been able to do a lot of runs way faster and it's, it's all action all the time. Whereas with Gungeon, there was some strategy to it as well. All right, let's go. So here's Calibur, here's our Blessing. And it's very simple, very basic shooter platformer gameplay. Oh, well, almost got hit there. Aiming is pretty difficult. If you don't use the um, stick at all, you fire straight in front of you. And if you can move the stick to fire up and down. I don't know why they have top hats, but that's pretty cute. Okay, so sometimes you'll need to just change your level, and that's where the difficulty comes in, is deciding if you want to stop shooting in order to jump up and down. Because the only way to go up and down as far as I can... Oh. I was going to say the only way is to use B, but apparently I can just use the left trigger as well. This changes everything. This actually changes everything. It makes it so much easier. Alright, so now I can just play properly and not move my hand around or do any claw function. That's awesome. Oh, you see that's the difficulty too, is sometimes you'll move up and down and you'll get in the path of bullets. And those who have played a lot of Enter the Gungeon will see that all these guns are familiar. This is the bullet, which is one of my old favorites. It shoots guns, and the guns shoot more bullets. It's great. So I think all the guns from Enter the Gungeon are in this game. I'm not I'm not sure, but I would assume so. I've seen some favorites and some not favorites appear already. I've seen the club and I've seen the makeshift cannon. And most of the enemies from Enter appear as well, except their patterns are usually a little bit different to fit the platformer theme. So what happens is you have an elevator stage, and then you have this arena stage. And the rooms can look a little bit different each time, but because there's no traversal, it's very kinetic. There's no downtime. Alright, I love that when they split, they get more top hats. That's awesome. So these are all familiar enemies. This is... Aiming like this is actually quite hard to deal with gravity. Alright, so we get a chest for that. And because our gun's always random, the chests will never contain guns, there are always passive items. Here we got the red one stone, which is awesome. We get more health and a floating thing that's going to erase bullets when I touch them. So now we go through. And just like that, we are on next floor. Ooh, so we have the face motor now. 
This is actually one of my favorite weapons in the original Gungeon, because you could reload and you would drop an amplifier, and the amplifier would shoot more bullets, and so it was very strategic. It's not as useful here, apparently. Alright, so we've just got a few more things to do. Get the skull split off. This weapon's pretty good. Lots of damage. I know the boss is coming up, so I want to try and start the boss with a good weapon. Of course it's all random, so you have no control over it. Okay, now I've got the big iron. Also a pretty good weapon. It's like a very powerful shotgun. Whoa! That was very arrogant of me. I thought I could kill it before it shot. Alright, so now I have the banana. I think I have to fight the boss with the banana. Oh! This is a new one. Yeah, so some of the bosses return. Like, I saw the Bullet King in one of my previous runs. And some bosses are brand new for this game. It is a little bit less bullet heli because jumping is hard, right? But also, weaving attacks like that is so much harder in this game. Because you're very limited in your space compared to the original. You can only move in two directions except for jumping, which makes you quite vulnerable. So. It is definitely learning a new way of approaching these challenges. I only have one health now, so... Yep. <laughs> Didn't even beat the first boss. This is what I mean. I can consistently get to maybe floor or four, four or five and enter. And an exit, I usually can't beat the first boss. It's so much faster as a game. That took four minutes and 30 seconds for me to die. That's crazy. Let's try it again. And same as an enter, when you beat a boss, you get hegemony credits. And that can be used to unlock more drops and more unique items. You also got the combo in the top right. I'm not fully sure on how to increase or decrease it, but I'm pretty sure it's like kill enemies, don't get hit, right? And yeah, if it gets to a higher number, then you're gonna be getting better weapons from Calibre. And it's gonna make your run even better. I've got the snowball, the snowball bubble blaster here. This weapon kind of sucks. I always hated getting it in Enter because it's hard to use. Okay, makeshift cannon. This is a really good, really powerful weapon. If you fire it at the enemy and not at the ground. But it is a charge weapon, so you've gotta hold onto it. It does a lot of damage. In Enter the Gungeon, actually, this is one of the guns that could bypass the boss damage threshold. Which meant that normally bosses took a certain amount of shots to kill no matter what you had. But the makeshift cannon could deal damage faster than was theoretically allowed by the game. Okay, this one we're firing pine cones. I've never seen that one before. We've got the blunderbuss for our stationary section. This is a much smaller area than the last run, so. Hopefully it'll be easier to. This weapon's very difficult to use. It's like a charged shotgun. The good thing about this is that I can show more weapons. In my Enter the Gungeon run, I feel like I could only really show off what the game gave me, and you'd get a new gun every... I don't know, like every five or so minutes of play. Whereas this one, you get a new gun every 30 seconds. And so it's a really good, abridged version of what Enter was like. I don't even know what I'm using right now. Alright, we've got the makeshift cannon back again. I hope we can keep it on the boss fight, but I don't know if that's how it works. So we've got a green chest, this contains a white gone stone, which gives me blanks, that's good. I have four Full health right now. So, should be enough for a boss, I think. Hopefully. Alright, so, we've got a few enemies to deal with first, and then the boss should spawn. I'm not used to the charge time of this one. Because basically, the second it's ready, it's forced to fire. 
Oh, new one. RC rocket. Oh no. This guy is so hard to use on controller. It's very easy on keyboard and mouse because the bullet moves towards your cursor. But on controller, it moves towards your right stick, which you usually move around to aim, so it's not the easiest gun to use. Oh, big iron. Okay, this one's pretty easy to use. Okay, we'll just dodge that. This is cool too, because it gives me a lot of things to talk about as I play. Whoa! And okay, we have three health for the boss now. This is the snowballer, we're shooting snowballs. It gives a slow effect to enemies, so you'll see that they fire slower, and the bullets should also move a bit slower as well. And when enemies freeze, they well, they stop moving for a bit, and they're more vulnerable to damage. That's a power up. I don't know where it is, but ah, it's a bomb. Okay. Blunderbuss is super hard to use. I hope I don't have to fight the boss with the blunderbuss. Gee, I wish I had a better combo. Yep, so here is our old mate, the high, the Bullet King, but now that I, re now that I notice, it's the, um, it's the Servant of the Bullet King, and I'm dead. Yeah, so in the original Enter the Gungeon, the fight was like the Bullet King, and then there was like a little Servant guy to the side, and now the Servant's on the throne, and that's a funny joke for people who played the game, and it makes no sense if you didn't play the game, and I died in 4 minutes and 20 seconds, so... <laughs> Hopefully, some at some point in this run, I will beat a boss and it will feel cool. I have no idea how long this game goes for. But we're gonna get better and better as we get used to these patterns. As we get used to jumping up and down too. The regular shotgun, which is a fantastic weapon for this. the weapons that are easier to use are going to stand out, at least in the very beginning when I'm getting used to the controls. So if I ever get like the, the AK-47 or like a Thompson machine gun or something, that's going to be super good. But if I'm using weird charge bouncy weapons, I'll have a hard time. Yeah, like this one. I can't be shooting anvils, it's so hard to use. So it seems like if you get a heart when you have full health, it just increases your combo. And I have no idea how combo affects the game. Let's just hope that the guns that we get randomly are going to be better quality. Okay, we've got a bullet, which is going to shoot guns for us. The running joke of this entire series is that everything in this dungeon or dungeon is a gun in some sort. So all the enemies are gun parts or gun bullets or guns. And all your items are vaguely related to guns. And the loading screen is the reloading screen. Oh, I the wind-up gun. I've been told this is a Futurama reference. So like a little wind-up spaceship that was in the TV show. And it plays a little song when you reload it. It's great. Put the grenade launcher. Which... I think it's firing shells. That's so funny. It's like, not, not like grenade shells, but like Mario shells. It's so good. Okay, this is the laser rifle. Pretty easy to use. It's just a point and click weapon. Whoa. Okay, we're back with Joy Cons this time. Oh, I my old ones were getting drifty, so I had to buy these new ones, and the only colours they had were purple and orange. And I actually kinda like this orange colour, but the purple doesn't pair with it, you know? It looks really weird next to each other. Anyways, that's my complaining. Back to the game. Oh, we've got some audio issues. Okay, we're back. I also don't know what gun we've got this time. It's firing double shots. Oh, rare chest. This is a red chest, nice. We got 
An orange glowstone. I don't know what that does. I think it sets things on fire. With um with the Joy Cons, it's good because you can have a thumb on B and have your thumb on the stick at the same time. So it's a bit easier to control, I guess. I still haven't figured out a scheme that feels really comfortable for me, but hey, you learn. We're at a combo of six right now, and we haven't taken a shot yet, which is awesome. I think maybe this will get us a better gun for our boss fight, fingers crossed. Oh no, we got the club. The club is infamously the worst weapon in the game. It has terrible spread and does basically zero damage. It's a reference to Goldeneye, which also had this as the worst weapon in the game. I miss old school shooter games where the guns had like a hierarchy, and some were just demonstrably better than the others. Okay, so this is the Rube Anodyne prototype. I have no idea what's unique about it. Oh, it's bouncy. Okay, so it's bouncy bullets. Okay. Nice, we got the letter, the letter R. It shoots the word bullet at enemies. And it says the word bullet when it shoots them. That's excellent. And we're back to the bubble blaster. This game has got a great sense of humor. And all the devs do. And I love it because this game is so much more fast paced. You see so much more to it in every run. And we've got the meow itself. It's like the how itself, but there's a cat in it. And the bullet... The, okay, I've got brick breaker, that's good. I was gonna say, the bubble bubble thing is a really bad weapon for this cat. We are taking so many hits. That is, that is an attack which needs to be jumped. One thing that I always liked about these games is that the bosses teach you how to play it. But now that I mention it, I'm still not very good at it. We are not even down a half health with it. That was stressful. I need to use a blanks. I'm too used to not using blanks because in Enter, I have just learned to dodge roll everything, and so I never use blanks in that game except to find secret rooms. And now I need to relearn using blanks when I can't dodge. Okay, we might do a few more runs and I'll stop when it gets boring to watch because no one wants to see me fail the very first stage over and over again, right? Okay, that's gonna be good for our combo. Those purple enemies just, uh, are, they're rubber bullets. They bounce you around, but they don't really hurt you. They just knock you into other enemies' bullets. Oh. I'm not used to the play space being this small too. So the way the bubble blaster works is the bubbles stay in front of you until you reload and that's when they get pushed towards where they were going. Also just notice, you can jump and then dodge in the air for a bit of extra movement. Nice, we got the moon scraper which is a beam weapon. And it bounces off walls so it's very easy to hit things with. It's one of the better beams in the original Enter the Gungeon. Okay, so now we got the charge shot. This one's really hard to work with. It takes a long time to shoot something, and when it does... Like, if you miss it, right? Or if you hit something that wasn't what you tried to hit, then you've now got to charge another shot, and it takes forever. Okay, so now we've got to our stationary room. This one's the very cramped one. Let's get rid of some of these boxes, so we have some space to work with. Oh nice, Luxon Cannon. This is a very simple weapon. Shoots rainbow lines. Makes a really painful sound. Alright, Bubble Blaster again. I think this wizard is the last guy we need to kill. It's just gonna position well, avoid his shots, and... Hopefully not take any damage. We're gonna go towards the boss with 4 health. 
What do we get? Nail gun. Nail gun's terrible. Doesn't do any damage and it's really, really bad spread. Okay, green chests. What do we get? There's a lot of Guan stones lately. White Guan stones, so we just get blanks. I need to use my blanks. I need to blank things. Need to blank and use my blanks. Also want to get rid of this nail gun real quick. I don't know if it's based on how many reloads you do, or how many kills you get, or time, or I don't know. Directional pad's pretty fun. In the original game, when you finish using it, you get a chest. I don't know if it's the same in this one, though. We've got a combo of five now, which is pretty good. We've got Anvil... Anvilin? We're shooting anvils. I don't want this for the boss, though. I like the sound. I like the, how the sound effect changes a little bit once it's been bouncing for a while. Okay, I've got the skull thing. -o. I don't know what it's called. The skull thing. -o. We're gonna dodge through everything. All right. Is it boss time? Oh, we got the cat again. Now it's a uh, Egnyan. I don't get it. Okay, so now we know how to dodge those. We need to go up and down. Whoa. Preferably the right way. I have no idea how to dodge the ram just yet. Oh, I get it. It's like Eggman. Because it looks like the, the boss from Sonic. So it's like Egnyan instead of Eggman. Oh, that's so smart. And I died. Okay. One more run. This time I have to beat the boss. If I don't beat the boss, I'm gonna end the let's play anyway, but everyone's gonna be really disappointed, so... It's all riding on... Is it pride? I think it's Pride. The Void Core Assault Rifle is a very good, simple weapon. Fires in threes. It's great for these early stages when the the enemies only take a few hits to kill. Okay. Old Blaster. I'm frustrated. Okay. Can't wait to get rid of this thing. But the blondie. Oh, so that's the double shot one. I'm wondering how many guns are in this game because I'm seeing the usual suspects kind of repeat themselves. But then again, oh, got hit. Oh, got hit again. I think that you can just unlock stuff because there's the um, there's the shop between levels which you can spend hegemony credits if you were to actually defeat bosses, but I'm not, so I can't unlock anything just yet. I have no idea what these um, shell casings are for, though. Oh, wait, no, there is a shop. There's a shop when you beat the boss. We've just never seen it because we've never beaten the boss. Nice. So you, this is the AK-47. This is just a good gun. It's an easy-to-use gun. This is how I felt when I first started playing... Enter the Gungeon 2. I wrote in the review, I think, that um, I liked the standard guns a lot more. So when they would give me things like pistols and machine guns and shotguns and stuff, I'd be like, I know how to use these. But they, if they were to give me something like a charged anvil shot or whatever, I'd just be like, I don't know what to do with this. Bullet idol. I don't remember what this does. I do not remember what it does. But let's find the door and move on. We've got the Crestfaller, which is a pretty good gun. Does damage and freezes. Let's try to keep our combo up, so that when we get to the boss, we're ready. Okay. The Luxon Cannon, also a pretty good one, easy to use. 
painful sound effects, but hey, you can't have everything, right? Oof. It's hard to decide if you want to dodge to the side or dodge up and down. It's definitely a lot more thought than the original Enter the Gungeon. It takes more brain power and instincts, which I don't have right now. And I got hit. So there goes my combo. And again. Got three health left. Hand cannon deals a lot of damage, even though the bullets are very small. So that should get me through the rest of this segment pretty quick. Got the grand rifle, which is just a regular rifle. And I am aiming very badly with it. Hoping to get rid of it before we get to the boss. Alright, so who will we fight this time? We've only got one leg. We're fighting the cat again. And we've got the guitar, which is not a great weapon for this. Okay, so I think it's just gonna jump when it comes for you like that. I've got nail gun, which is possibly a worse weapon for it. Oof. Oof. Got hit by the ram twice. Oh, that's sad. I do want to beat a boss at one point. Did I say I was only gonna do that as my last run? Forget it. One more run, one more run, one more run. This is how they get you, right? You're just like, I only want to play for an hour. And then you get maybe two or three bad runs, and you're like, oh, I don't feel like I've played it yet. And so you go for one more run. And then you get on a really good run, and it takes you forever. And then before you know it, you've been playing for three hours. And I mean, you had a good time, but there's other things you needed to do with your day, right? I think that's why I've put so many hours into Enter the Gungeon, is because if you start getting a good run, you can't stop. It just feels great. Okay, it looks like the top level is really dangerous. I'm just going to stay off that. Got three dangerous enemies that I should prioritize at the same time. Alright, but the scramble, which is a great weapon. Shoot eggs that break into little homing pieces. Oh wow, I'm taking so many hits. I think maybe this will be the run that I beat the boss. It always happens like this, when a run that's going really well, you take no damage, and then you fail the boss. And a, a run that's really sloppy, and you take so much damage, you somehow get really great luck on the boss. Alright. So that brings us to the stationary segment. Well, it's a new room. I've not seen this one before. Let's clear the boxes so we have some space to dodge. That's in a really bad spot for me. Because I can't hit it, but it might hit me. Oh, Luxon Cannon. Okay. I think that's it. We've got our chests. A lichy trigger finger. And like the other games, you've got the... Oh, you've got like a little Game Boy... What's this called? A Game Boy Mini, I think? You've got the D-pad and you've got the face button. Ready to fire up. And you can see all your items here. The finger bone of an ancient lich, which is skilled in the art of gunplay. Unfortunately, this finger bone is not the lich's phylactery. Ugh, so it's just a finger. And you've got your passive based on your character chosen. You've got the Diginomicon. Also, is it meant to be like a Digivice? You can see everything in the game, and yeah, there's heaps and heaps of stuff. I don't know if this is the same amount of guns in the original, but it's a good amount. Alright, so let's go to... The next floor. Hopefully get a good run at the boss. Oh, 
Oh, a nail gun again. At least it's... At least when you get a bad gun, you know it's you're not going to have it for a long time. And so you can... You're always feeling kinetic, right? You're always moving, you're always doing something. You're never in the middle of a run thinking, Hey, I, I, should, res I should restart, right? Because my luck hasn't been good. No, you always have something to do. Okay. What do we get this time? Oh, we still have the skull shooter. And now I have a D-pad. I think overall there's less gun less bullets in this game. Maybe they intended it to be mobile as well? I don't know. I don't know what platforms this is out on actually. I know it's on PC, I know it's on Switch. I don't know what else has this game. But I could see it working on phones. It's a lot smaller, a lot better for shorter bursts. The only problem would be the control system. Okay, so we've got the Medusa Leo. I know some of the patterns of this boss based on previous runs and based on the original Gungeon. Like this pattern, I'm pretty confident in weaving through. We've got the charge shot, which means bad. It's very bad. And I'm dead. What? I didn't even think I was that low on health. Okay. Well, thank you for joining in. This has been Exit the Gungeon. I feel like I would be here for another three hours if I tried to beat the boss, so I think there's good depth here. There is a lot to dig into, and if you played the original Enter the Gungeon, if you haven't played it, I would still say it's a great game to recommend. It's difficult, but it's quite rewarding. It's very exhilarating, so yeah, very highly recommended. And I am going to go back into my cave to play Animal Crossing. See you guys next week.